All right. We are here. We are here. Yeah. And I have a quick, good question for you. Oh, boy. Well, what is it? So you're courting a, a nice woman and you've been talking, let's say, for months now, um, getting very close. And for the first time, you got invited over to her place. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're really close. You're trying to decide if you want to just like take the next step into being in a relationship. But on one of her dressers, you see a doll or dolls what is that are childlike in size. So what is the threshold on the number of dolls that they can have to <laughs> decide if you can or cannot be with them? Well, OK, so here's the thing, right? It depends on what dolls they are. And de- yeah, so like depending on what dolls they are determines the amount. So if okay. it's something like, you know, Barbie or uh, like a Cabbage Patch Kid, I'll say hey, you get like maybe two, three, maybe maybe even four. I will give you that. But as soon as you get something like, let's say, a Raggedy Ann doll or a uh, or 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 a porcelain doll or like one of or one of those, you know, uh, you you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. one of them, one of them like creepy dolls that stares right into your soul that look like that pretty much look like they came straight out of the 60s or earlier but somehow were still made today and you're just wondering like that might be pure evil that's red (laughs) that's a red flag that point the number is zero (laughs) because as soon as i see one of those i'm out relationship over so for the first category you mentioned where can the dolls be located where can it be located? I mean, you know, so, like, so, so like it for me, like something like that, like I can't have something looking at me in the bathroom or like, oh, no, 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 no. You do that again. That That's immediately grounds <laughs> for me leaving. Uh, And in case any girls are wondering, like, yes, if that's that happens, I'm gone. Uh, So where they can be located at. I don't want to see them in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see them staring at me in the middle of the night. <laughs> so they can't be like on the dresser in front of the bed. They have to either be facing away from me or in the closet or somewhere else. Now, the living room, I'll I'll give it a slight pass. I don't know who would do that nowadays, but I'll give that a slight pass. Uh all right, because it's the living room, you know, that's that's where everything lies. Uh, but the bedroom is sacred, you know. The bedroom is where I'm at my second most vulnerable. First most vulnerable, obviously, being the bathroom. Yes. Uh it's it's where I feel at home. That's where I feel the safest. But and if you if you do anything to disturb that, I'm I'm either leaving or I'm killing everything in sight. Okay, what about kitchen? All right, now this one comes also with a bunch of caveats, my guy, <laughs> because if I see like, hey, say this dog got like an apron on and whatnot, and just like off to the side, like just doing whatever, I like, all right, I'm cool. As soon as I see that thing with kitchen utensils, <laughs> if, if I see it with a spoon, if I see it with a fork, if I especially see it with a knife, you are out of here. You going straight <laughs> to the gulag. You going straight to the trash. I am gone <laughs> immediately. No. <laughs> I like you can, that. You can tell I, I thought about this way too much. I like those answers. No, it's like you said, like we said, situational awareness at the start of season two. Mm. Uh, so I'm Demetrius. And I'm Demetrius. And Meach and Meach presents the Blurred City Podcast. All right, people. So just a quick update. We are recording this about a week before Christmas. Um, so the Saturday, the Saturday before Christmas Eve. So yeah, so we can advance. Uh, so anything when we get into the what's hot segment may or may not be outdated. If something new pops up, we're not necessarily going to be able to cover it between that time. Um, but this functionally serves as a, another bonus episode. We had plans for something else. They kind of just fell through. So we were working around it and we thought what better idea since we started season two of horror all up in our horror bag to wrap it up. Well, to finish up season one, season two, part one with uh, just killer doll discussion. So before we get completely out of pocket, we always hit you with the legal Spiegel. 
Yep. And for this out of pocket legal spiegel, the purpose of this podcast is to explore digital and print media. All sources we reference are owned by their respective companies and our thoughts and agendas are strictly our own and do not reflect any biases whatsoever. Your discretion is advised. So, so we are here. Um, and like I mentioned, we're going to get into a killer doll, doll discussion. So Chucky season two wrapped up a few weeks ago. I finally was able to finish it about like last week. And so, yeah, this is literally one episode I had to cover, uh, but everything popped up. But we're going to get into a season one and season two brief recap and then get into a bigger discussion and just the killer doll toy discussion. So that's how we opened it up. And now we're going to hit you with the what's hot. Huh, man. So what's hot? What's good in these streets? Uh, Well, firstly, again, I hope you all have have had a, an amazing holiday and amazing Christmas. And, and and I hope you guys watch the all the usual Christmas movies and Christmas shows. You know, you got your Charlie Brown Christmas, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. If you know, you know, Uh, you watch Home Alone one and two. Those are the only ones that matter. <laughs> uh, and and watch, you know, National Lampoon, Christmas Vacation, Goaded. I mean, hey, if you if those those are the main movies that you you have to watch these seasons. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, how can I forget how the Grinch stole Christmas? Both yes, the animated please. and live action version. <laughs> Both are hilarious. And I'm not talking about the new one. And I'm especially <laughs> not talking about the mean one. Oh uh, my goodness! Though I'm, though I am probably gonna watch that eventually. So, uh, I, I watched it. It was oh my! It was Sharknado esque. <laughs> all right, so I'm taking that off my list. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so what's hot is that, uh, of course you got, well, you're gonna have Bad Batch, uh, season two dropping. You got, uh, you got, you know, your your favorite animes. they they'll be slowly ending um it was like some maybe continuing some maybe slowly ending you know just just or not ending but more like taking a break because you know christmas season everybody right. needs a holiday even the animators uh even though i really want them all to to experience christmas through the studio window uh <laughs> savage oh uh, yes yes i i'm a workaholic and i am a pure demon um but speaking of of uh, other things, did you hear about the Ahsoka leaks? Oh, no, I did not. What happened? So so for the new show, Ahsoka, uh, apparently Hayden Christensen is back in there. Ooh, Ooh we mentioned that before. That's wild. Uh, yep. Yep. That's a, the, a, a again. Everybody's listening to the podcast. Where's Someone's my listening. money? Where's my money? <laughs> Where's my bag? But yes, Hayden Christensen is back in the in his Revenge of the Sith fit. So, which is the best fit um, for? Well, if you're not counting Vader, yeah. uh, if you're not counting Vader, Revenge of the Sith is best. Anakin. Uh, I don't want to hear no ifs, ands, or buts. In fact, there's a friend who's deep into Star Wars, and she said that that was that was not the best movie. And it was the most cringy. I'm just like, listen, 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 Kent. I'm gonna need you to uh, calm down because you're you're talking you're talking bad about my favorite movie. Um, <laughs> you need you to calm that. Uh, I expect your opinion, but you are wrong. <laughs> I think Revenge of the Sith, in terms of the nine Star Wars movies, not counting um, Rogue One is my favorite just because of when it came out and then i enjoyed it so nine don't you mean eight what do you mean you oh. know you got the <laughs> og6 you got yes. uh you got solo and you got rogue one i mean i said outside of rogue one and then solo but yes i understand <laughs> what yeah. you mean i don't know where i came up with those extra numbers <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why well actually no no way you are right because there are nine because i forgot about the clone wars movie i'm sorry mm. my, my apologies my apologies <laughs> yeah but right. but yeah that's pretty much all i had for for right now for me, uh, I think you did mention Megan. Uh, that comes out January 4th, as you mentioned, Bad Batch, January 4th. There's going to be new animes kicking off in uh, January. We will we'll cover them in our return episode. Um, so that's going to be after the mailbag episode that comes out after this. And then one movie that maybe I'll be able to cover next week is I'm going to go see The Well at some point. Mm. Ideally, it's Brendan Fraser's comeback. It looks like oh, a tearjerker. Right. Yeah. It looks like a tearjerker, 
Um, the fact that they're hyping it up as one, I don't know if I'm a cry or not, because only four movies have made me cry, like like bawling, crying. And they go as follows radio. So I watched it when I was a kid. Um, mm-hmm. that 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 scene with his mom had me like boo-hoo crying. Second one is up. Uh, the montage was out of control. Third one, Les Mis. I think I was just crying throughout the whole movie. And then the fourth one that broke me up was a silent voice that destroyed my spirit. So, <laughs> so, so maybe this will be another one to list. But yeah, that's that's all I got. So if you're listening, thank you. I hope this works with just like if you're chilling with family, uh, going back to your new traveling for New Year's bag. So this is just going to be a light episode that's just easily digestible. Yeah, so kicking off into it, we are going to start with our Chucky Season 1 and Season 2 Brief Recap. (laughs) All right, so let's go ahead and get into our boy, to our boy Chucky. Uh, Yeah, but in in case uh, our dear listeners who do not know, we will, we may or may not be going to spoilers on to the Chucky and the Child's Play franchise. So uh, you have been sufficiently warned. Um, But get into like, who, who is Chucky? Who, who's, who's this man that has his whole, has a whole TV show uh, that's, that's not for kids. At no, all, <laughs> uh, we you know Charles Lee Ray. You know he was a human. He was a uh, he was a serial killer. Uh, and one day, hey, it was a an attempt. He pretty much got apprehended by the cops. Got shot up. Got got sent packing. But uh, he decided to say, nah, death. He he decided to pull Kratos. Death can have me when it earns me. Yes. And. <laughs> Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Wait, death can have me when it earns me. <laughs> and he, and pretty much, he transfers his soul into that of a good guy doll, uh-huh. which is basically that universe's version of a Cabbage Patch Kid. Uh, and from there, he pretty much, as as a killer doll with all the strength of an adult, he, for some ungodly reason, and he's just going around murking folks. Murking yes. people sideways, but yeah, that's and what you need to know is that that's him, that's his story. He also has a wife named Tiff, Tiffany Valentine, played by the amazing uh, Jennifer Tilly. Uh, and she's also, again, his wife, also serial killer, also gets her soul transferred into a doll. Yep, and and yeah, yeah, and also, hey, they have a kid. Uh, but the kids is pretty much going to be most important for, for season two. But given to a brief recap up to like season one, right? We we pretty uh-huh. much the main focus is Jake because he was a gay kid in middle school. He's pretty much, you know, kind of like the outcast because he's comes from he's poor. He's gay, which, yeah, which is a, apparently a problem out here in 2022. But uh, uh, oh, wait, it's with dolls. Yeah, yeah, and he messes with dolls. Like he goes and finds dolls, and he makes like art out of them. And when he's at a, at a certain garage sale, who should be there but a good guy doll? Mm-hmm. Red flag number one. Uh, is that is that 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 uh good guy doll was just right there, prime for the taking? And apparently the even the per even the person who ran the the garage sale didn't know about the doll. So I'm just like. Mm. yes i think we should also mention that maybe did but that the setting takes place in hackensack which is the hometown of charles lee ray aka chucky oh yes yes that's the main thing so pretty much you got jake he takes the doll and then he goes to goes home where he deals with his homophobic dad oh wait his homophobic drunken dad who is played by the amazing devin sawa (laughs) <laughs> In case you do not remember who he is, he plays Alex, who's the main character from the first Final Destination movie. Ooh. So, yeah, the man is getting his bag <clears throat> multiple times, <laughs> yeah. which you will see. So, of course, he's dealing with that. Then in school, of course, as I said, high outcast in school. So he pretty much gets bullied by his cousin, Junior, and... 
Junior's girlfriend. Oh boy. <laughs> oh! oh, oh man, oh, the evil, the evil one. <laughs> All right, I need to prep myself for for not uh just coming down <laughs> on this person, Lexi. All yes. right, Lexi, the hugest problem, the biggest op of the show, show more so than Chucky, which <laughs> is surprising. All right. How you how you be more evil than a serial killing doll? You you tell me, but we will tell you. <laughs> yeah. So so essentially, like they're all bullying him, you know. And Jake's like only source of comfort in his friend is his crush named uh Devin, and you no know, Devin. He's a horror aficionado. He runs a horror podcast. Eh eh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And and yeah, so hijinks ensues when Chucky decides to reveal himself to Jake. He's like, "Hey, listen, I'm a I'm a help you out with your problems. I'm a I'm a be kind of your fairy godfather, and I'm murking everything on sight. All right, I'm murking all your problems, starting with your dad." It was really interesting in season one how they started it off with just like for the first few episodes, you were like, "Oh, I really actually like feel for." Ch- well, not fail for Chucky, but you're like, you can connect with him in a sense because like he was like, yo, I don't care that you're gay to Jake. Um, he was actually like being there for him. He was supporting him. Like when people were bullying him, he was like uh going after them in a sense. So, but then like his motives get revealed later, but essentially at different times he was not to go too far, but he was trying to get Jake to become a killer uh, mm-hmm. to take out Lexi. And we will talk about why of why he wanted to get to that point. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, all right. So let's get into it. So, of course, Jake's dad gets gets a bit physically abusive with Jake. And then Chucky decides to step in um, and decides to electrocute a uh, young <laughs> young pops. <laughs> R.I.P. to the scumbag, but uh, kind of had it coming. So, so with that, he Jake ends up getting taken in by Junior's dad, mm-hmm. who's also played by Devin Sawa because it, it was a twin <laughs> brother, and also the wife is actually played by the same actress, the lead actress who starred in Jason X. Ooh, uh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna. Like literally this this whole time where I'm gonna recap, I'm just gonna start naming off the people who played in other movies. So you so when you know, you know. And also I'm just flexing on people. Uh <laughs> I'm flexing on the audience. But yeah, so he moves in with them. So and so of course Junior kind of has a he's just like, bruh, just stay out of my way and and you'll be straight. And it's also kind of like has an inferiority complex because his dad's overbearing on him to be the yes. biggest track star. And Lexi being the uh, the alpha of the relationship. Which, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. But and then, of course, you know, Devin invites, invites Jake to a party where the scene happens. Oh, boy. All right. So because Le- co- it takes place like around Halloween and Lexi decides in her in her mind. This was wild. <laughs> to dress up as Jake's dad when he was being electrocuted and started just going having like seizure, fake seizures of like, <laughs> like she had the hair like uh like Bride of Frankenstein up like frizzy, just like in his work suit. That was my like jaw was on the floor. I was like, yo, this is wild to do something like this. Yep. And it was at that moment, I was like, all right you need to die <laughs> and that was the same conclusion jake went with mm-hmm. so he went through his training art <laughs> yes because of course no no show is ever complete without a training montage of jake you know learning how to kill you know using using his knife on his own like art he mm-hmm. he in the garage trying to grab like like oh let me see if this sickle would do anything let me see if this uh this machete will do anything. And well, Chucky I'm... just gassing him up. He's like, yeah, Jake. Yeah, Jake. It's the first time, Jake. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jake. Let's get it, my guy. Uh, But, and then we cut over to Lexi. So, and they tried to endear us to her, which did not work with me for the <laughs> longest time because in with her, it seems like, because her mother is the mayor of Hackensack. Mm-hmm. So she, 
and it seems like Lexi is the outcast of that family because uh because their dot because the other sister, the younger sister Caroline, who who appears to be on the spectrum, is apparently really gifted, and of course, dad and mom trying to nurture nurture them. Also, just to note that the actress who plays Lexi and the actress who plays Lexi's mom are actually real life mother and daughter. Whoa, I did not know that. Yep. So dang wow that was when we get to season two that chemistry makes so much sense in the last scene now mm-hmm. so so yeah so like when so of course carol and caroline's also like obsessed with chucky because jake used chucky in a talent show mm-hmm. and completely uh embarrassed <laughs> embarrassed uh lexi super hard and i i was super happy about that so she's obsessed with it and then jake's side's like you know what I'm going to give Chucky over to Caroline so that way Chucky can be the one to take out Lexi. Yes, he sent a plant as the op. But oh, there's also one scene in the training arc that uh, that was really creepy where he knew the route that Lexi went on for her runs and he was following her. Oh, man, that was creepy when Jake did that. And then did she... I'm trying to remember the scene. She, I know she like took her headphones out, but I don't remember if she saw him or if she just heard a noise. Um, if no, you she that. just heard a noise because she didn't see him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because like it was because of the fact that it was actually a it was actually a debate because it turned mm-hmm. out like Jake was kind of following Junior by accident. Yes. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So with that, of course, uh, things popped off when uh <laughs> when there was another party at Lexi's oh. place. Oh, yes. That that Jake was not going to be invited to. In fact, I think he refused to. And unfortunately, <laughs> oh, oh wait, before that, oh, I got to mention how Chucky was wilding out just from the start when he killed the maid. Oh, <laughs> yes. Like he just murks the maid for no reason. No reason. Like like all she did did was just like I think she just like cleaned up Chucky's face and I like, make him look 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 a little shinier. And mm-hmm. as thanks, he just pushed her into some knives. A literal bed of knives. <laughs> yep. So I'm just like, uh, sir, sir, I know you Chucky, I know you're irredeeming, but come on, man. Um, but yeah, now to the party where things are popping off. This this was a silent was disco. A, yeah, this was a super Gen Z type of party, a silent disco where everybody had headphones and they were all listening to the same music. And we're just going ham. I can imagine you just walk in, you just see everybody just. Yeah, but you can't hear the music because you don't have the headphones. So. Like you can't hear nothing. You just be like, "What in the what in the Gen Z? What in the Gen Z middle schoolers going on here?" So, oh yeah, so Lexi ends up mur. No, no, not Lexi. Chucky, my bad. Ends up murdering one of Jake's bullies. Mm-hmm. All while Lexi was trying to, you know, get it in with Junior and trying to make him take initiative, you know, in the in the good times, if you will. It was weird, uh, just Junior and her relationship, because it felt like Junior liked Devin also the way they like framed it. But then at the same time, it, it was like, oh, this is my friend Devin. Why are you talking to my cousin? So it was like really weird, like that dynamic. Hey, it could be that he was maybe a closeted. You, we don't know, uh, except yes. for maybe Don Mancini. <laughs> but, yes, uh, and in that scene that you mentioned, I believe Chucky set the curtains on fire, which turned out cutting the rest of the house on fire. So yeah. no one knows what's going on because they have the headphones turned up full blast in the silent disco. So you just see like this dancing scene, but the fire is spreading, which I really, really liked um, in that. Yeah. And then, yeah, he's just going ham on the bully, stabbing him uh, 20 times. <laughs> 20,001 times. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, like, of course, he goes in, tries to kill Lexi, and then pretty much terrifies her, freaks her out, and cuts to the next day, everybody in the hospital, uh, you no, know, Lexi, well, Caroline's pretty much in, like, a, in a miniature coma, you know, mm-hmm. from smoke inhalation. And then, of course, Lexi's parents are blaming Lexi for the incident. You got Ju- 
Junior, who's also in the hospital for smoke inhalation. Devin's in the hospital, smoke inhalation. You got, and then Jake just arrives. And then also Devin Moms, who's a who's pretty much the sheriff of the town. She's starting to get suspicious because like ever since ever since Jake kind of got this doll, like things mm-hmm. been popping off. So she thinks it's Jake who's been doing all this uh sus activity when we all know who it really is. Lexi Which... is yeah. Lexi oh, is yeah, uh is essentially like she's like, listen, Jake, uh I know you the one who sent that killer doll after me. I'm gonna need you to fix my problems for me now. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, ain't this but you know what? <laughs> Let me go find Chucky. Let me send like if that was me, I was like, oh nah. Hey Chucky, Chucky, run in her pockets. <laughs> I would have done it right there in the hospital. Nah, but we gotta but, talk about that cool uh cop death scene. Woo, yeah, yeah, but but before that, there's actually a moment before that where they go back to the destroyed house. Oh, yes. And this is where things kind of swapped a bit because Jake just lets it all out on Lexi. Just mm-hmm. lets everything out. And I'm just like, yeah, yes, Jake. Talk that talk, my guy. Talk that talk. talk. Yo, talk. <laughs> all all the while, a like burnt, like like burnt melted Chucky is pretty much gassing him up to murder. It's like, go ahead, do it, do it. And mm-hmm. it comes a moment where Jake makes a choice. Like it's either let Lexi fall and and Chucky kills her or pull her back up and for well not really forgive her but uh just pull her back up and say like hey I'm not gonna be a killer of course he chooses the latter because he's our protagonist it would be amazing if he chose the former <laughs> uh, but Lexi takes notice of this and starts being slowly kinder to him and and then we get back to the hospital you know she and and this is the scene that we're talking about where Chucky or melted Chucky, he uh he stabs this man with a bunch of used needles. Oh boy, yes. So many used needles that it kills the cop who was like on guard watching everybody. Mm-hmm. Whew, but but yeah, that was Yeah. So I think just with that, there's two things to mention. Um, because you mentioned there was a burnt Chucky, and then you mentioned that there's a Chucky at the hospital. So I'm not sure what the specific movie is, but you would know. But there is a Curse of Chucky and then there is a Cult of Chucky movie where yep. you start to see that Chucky can split his soul. In cult some, yes. was the one. So, yes, I've seen that. Um, so in Cult of Chucky, we see that he can split his soul into different. He mostly just chooses Chucky dolls, but he can do it into different beings. Um, we do see other characters that will kind of fit into it. So there's one. Um, do you know the character's name um, that's in the wheelchair? Uh, that's Nika Pierce. She is the main protagonist of Curse of Curse and Cults of Chucky, who <laughs> pretty much is a who's pretty much paralyzed because when Chucky was human, he stabbed the pregnant mother in the womb. Yes. Yeah, so Chucky also has his soul in her. Um, so like she has a dissociative identity disorder with that so he can so he can take over with that so in the series we start to see and it really plays into a big uh part of the finale but he can split his souls into chucky doll so that's something to keep in mind and also you also mentioned that the cop is starting to get suspicious of jake um because as soon as he gets the chucky doll there's this death surrounding him no matter where he goes this has a lot of parallels to the Child's Play movies. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the Child's Play movies, we do see the return of one of the goats, Andy. <laughs> Andy Barkley, played by the original actor, Alex Vinson. Also, just to note, uh, Nika Pierce is played by Fiona Dorov, who's the daughter of Ch- daughter of Brad Dorov, a.k.a. the voice of Chucky. That's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, so many family connections in this entire show. And then also in Child's Play 2, we get Kyle. She is also in the uh, the new Chucky series. She, yep. in Child's Play 2, was the older, adopted essentially, sister. stepsister. Yeah, it's adopted, but adopted sister of uh, Andy in Child's Play 2 and plays a big role. So. Yep, and plays the same character, played by the same actress. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, just skipping through like a bunch of the nonsense. So essentially, you know... 
essentially just speeding on. You get uh Bree, who's like the mother of Junior. She's pretty much she has cancer, but wasn't revealing it to anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. Chucky wilding out and <laughs> Chucky wilding out like all and ends up ends up murking her uh, in probably one of the most gut wrenching scenes of all time because like essentially like her whole plight throughout the entire series was in fact like she was harboring a deep secret the secret was that she had cancer it was terminal and mm-hmm. she wanted to tell like the family but it's like very tough for her to do, do so because she's the strong one and that's that's real um uh, and and essentially like chuck and like she ends up going to her therapist and say like hey I'm going to refuse the treatment because I know it's going to be like super hard on the family. And I just want to like spend time with them with as much time as I got left. And then Chucky kills her. And yep. he's just like, bah! bro, pushed her out of a window onto the car that, that son- junior was yeah. in. So that messed him up. Also just keep on going. There is this one teacher in the school, Miss Fairchild, oh, the so best teacher. Yes, she's so amazing, so beautiful. She's an amazing teacher. She she reminds me so much of my like high school uh like science teachers. Like all of them rolled into one, and that was her on a team. I'm like, yeah, that's right. You are her. You are her. But uh, but she gets done dirty because of all the because of all the murders that have been happening, ends up like implicating her into pretty much she gets framed for it. So she gets taken away for the rest of season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what else can happen. We got, let's see, Devin and uh, Devin and Jake. They form in a relationship as like, as like he pulls, J- well, De- Jake pulls Devin into the Chucky shenanigans as they figure it out from the from the fire. Of course, mm-hmm. Lexi is slowly becoming kinder to Jake. All. And then, of course, as we mentioned, Kyle and Andy, they're going around murdering every single Chucky doll that's been possessed. Bro, I love their reintroduction. Yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> yeah. So like they just they're going in like secret agents to this black family. They're like, hey, uh, do you like they're pretending to be census bu- from the census bureau? And it's like, hey, you got this doll? <laughs> Like, yeah. And then like she then the little daughter pulls out the Chucky doll and they just start blasting. <laughs> yes. They were not caught lacking at all. The only person caught lacking was Chucky. Yes. And traumatized that family for life. Yes, because, because like since the Chucky dolls are human, it actually like bleeds now. So Yep. So bang 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 bang. Uh but yeah, keeping on keeping on moving on. Uh, course, we see that Junior's dad, he's slowly uh becoming more and more bearing on to Junior, especially yeah. due to like the fire shenanigans and like not being I... a track star. And of course, wife dying. Uh, of course, uh, with that, you also see Tiffany come back into the picture mm. as she's trying to gas up uh Junior by like pretending that she's having an affair with uh with, that, yeah. with the dad and Oh yeah, gotta remind you all that like this is like a holdover from Seed of Chucky where like essentially Tiffany ends up transferring like her soul into the body of actual actress Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> yeah. So essentially the our actress Jennifer Tilly is playing is playing Tiffany who's trying to p- pretend to be herself. <laughs> there so are so funny. many layers onto that performance. I'm just like Yeah, especially in season two. Especially, yeah, especially season two, like that was wilding. But, but yeah, so like Tiffany's in the picture, like she's doing that, all that gassing up, like, you know, helping Chucky out. Uh, Chucky also, yeah, has just been gassing up everybody, trying to kill each other. The, mm-hmm. the trio of Jake, Devin, and Lexi trying to formulate Home Alone esque plans to try to take out Chucky, which don't work. No. And at the end of the day, Junior pretty much. Like throughout what, all the stress that's been going on, you know, with the stress of dad being overbearing, mother dying, Jake mm-hmm. somehow getting a lot of more positive attention, especially from Lexi. Yeah. Them Lexi and Junior breaking up because because like uh Junior won't listen to like Lexi when she's telling him about like, hey, 
Chucky is real and Chucky's doing all the shenanigans. Uh, right. Like all that stress at, combined with the Chucky gaslighting, which yes. Chucky's ought to do, ends up causing Junior to murder his dad. And that was all according to his plan. Chucky had a Sosuke Eisen level of planning. Yes. <laughs> where he just wanted one kid to murder somebody. So that way this ritual will be performed, which would cause all of the all the good guy dolls to become possessed by Chucky. Mm-hmm. And each of them having, you know, Chucky's personality and proclivity to kill. So uh, of course, at the apex, you know, Devin gets captured. Well, yeah, Devin oh, gets yeah. captured because he ends up like deciding signing on his own to like go into Ch- Charlie Ray's like home. Because it's after his mom dies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Goes into Charlie Ray home to try to figure out, like, Chucky's plan because Mama ends up getting clapped by Chucky. Pushed down the stairs, broken neck. Yep. I'm I'm telling you, this. if there's one thing this show's going to teach you, is is called a parental side. Uh, Jeez, the parents geez. just get it in the show. Uh, and, like, Jake was... Pretty much at this point, Jake is just given up. Be- so, like, he ends up leaving Hackensack, but then returns when he sees, like, a good guy doll heading straight for uh, Hackensack. He's like, nah, 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 I'm going back. Uh, mm-hmm. Which leads to, like, a pretty interesting moment between him and Lexi, where, like, Lexi is like, so you just gonna leave your family? Uh, and he's like, what family? <laughs> what family do I got left? He's like, got us. The family chose. I'm like, whoa, 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 Lexi. That's a uh... us question mark. Yeah, I'm like, us. Like, whoa, whoa, Lexi. This has been like what a few days since you uh, it's been like a few days since you just dressed up as my dead dad. Mm-hmm. This ain't over. Between us. <laughs> we ain't straight. Forever smoke. <laughs> like we ain't good. But of course, Jake being the good boy and not a total menace like me, uh, pretty much fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. They end up meeting with Andy and Kyle. No, no, wait. Lexi and Jake end up meeting with Kyle, mm-hmm. who knocks both of them out with some roofies, a la uh, Pill Cosby. Um, <laughs> but not with but not with Pill Cosby intentions, but mm-hmm. with you no know, intention of keeping them out of the shenanigans. Right. So, Which is and- essentially what Andy did to her. Well, he just left her, but the same sentiment. Yep. Yep. Same thing happened. So you see Andy, he going in to take out the to take out the Chuckies. You got Kyle who tried to take out the Chuckies, and then them with the help of Devin ends up blowing up the house. Uh and and when Jake and Lexi come to, they find out the house get blown up. They thought Devin's gone. And again, they end up consoling one another. I'm just like, um, again, this has been like a few <laughs> days. Like, you don't think I forgot. That uh, share of trauma changed you, man. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I I wouldn't know, but uh, but yeah. So like with that, uh, wait, actually, let me knock on wood for that. But when you get to at the end of the season, it all comes to a head at the movie theater mm-hmm. where where they're showing Frankenstein of all things. So I'm like, oh, some symbolism there because oh boy, Chucky is a whole Frankenstein's monster at this point. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so you got. Junior trying to kill Lexi. You got the got one of the Chuckies end up murdering Lexi's dad. Ooh, with, yeah. In probably one of the most brutal methods ever, which is a callback to every single child's play movie where he tries stabbing you through the through the bed, through the chair with the <laughs> kitchen knife, and he always fails. This is the one time he succeeds. That was and, wild. So he stabs the dad from right on under. <laughs> Uh, it, it it hurts me more just saying, talking about it and thinking about it, so I'm gonna just move on. Yes. So, yes. Dad, dead. Uh, a bunch of people, dead. dead. Ju- As I said, Junior ends up uh, Junior ends up fight- fighting against Lexi, cause, and she tries to convince him to turn back to the light side of the force, Anakin, uh, but it's too late. <laughs> it's too late for him. But then he gets at the last second and ends up murdering one of the Chucky dolls at the cost of his own life. So mm-hmm. double homicide. Uh, and then Jake ends up fighting another Chucky. 
and manages to strangle this one to death with his bare hands. That's wild. Which all and also brings back a funny moment where he goes like, "How strong are you?" <laughs> No, no, wait. Chuck is like, yeah, you're wondering how a killer doll like me is as strong as I am. He's like, it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense, but we just rolling with it. Yeah, I not... just turned that part of my brain off. Mm-hmm. And, of course, he kills them, like, kills them, and then at the end of the day, in the season, you got you got Andy, who's driving all the the Chucky dolls in a pickup truck, Ends up getting uh, pretty much got got the got pulled on him by t- the Tiffany doll because she yep. also split her soul into the doll, into a doll. And then you got Jake, Devin, and Lexi. They're all consoling each other at the grave of Junior, and and pretty much they're all friends now. Apparently, uh, again, <laughs> forget, but never, never forget. Uh, <laughs> I'm never forgetting Lexi, uh, and. Of course, Jake and Devin are together. Oh yeah, Miss Fairchild, Fairchild, she got released from prison because because essentially, like they pinned, like the cops all pinned the oh, crime yeah. on Junior Poor and guy. Junior being the murderer. And felt like Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And that was the end of season one. Yeah, yeah, I really compare when we get to season two i felt like season one was much more succinct um and just like the storytelling and how they introduced introduced different elements was more uh streamlined i say and when we touch on season two i do feel like there were a lot of things that didn't get followed through on or they just like did it more for shock value but we can jump into that so um with season two essentially it opens up with right where andy is uh driving off into with the highway with jennifer uh yeah with the tiffany doll essentially keeping the gun to his head events happen and essentially they drive off of a cliff and the truck goes on fire so we think that they're all dead but if you've seen any horror movie you know that is not the case uh so it jumps back to present day how many how much time has passed it's like maybe a year okay so a year passed uh Devin and Jake are both in just like foster homes and they're trying to just like make their relationship work in a sense. (gasps) And then, Oh, what's up? We forgot to mention one thing in season one is basically the side plot of Nika. Yes. Yes. So essentially like, Oh yeah. So before we get into season two, okay, we've got Nika. She essentially is possessed by Chucky. Turns out like the sight of blood is what like triggers her to swap personalities back and forth. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, turns out Tiffany is like also in love with Nika now. Uh, yes. So again, more LGBTQ uh, representation, and in order to like to ensure that Chucky doesn't just mm. wild out on her, Tiff at the end of season one, Tiffany decides upon herself to cut off all the limbs of Nika. So she's a she's paraplegic at this point. Yes, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, so just with that, that ties into season two because we see Tiffany, she is essentially she kept Nika in the house for like a year um, and has to watch over her, which is a plot point that follows through in season two. And then just like I was saying with Jake and um, Devin, it's around Halloween season. So we start to see like, okay, there's this weird being that is the small creature that has gone into the house of Lexi texting and calling Jake and it's like, hey, watch this. And you're like, oh, this has to be Chucky, which it turns out to be. And he just like gets them all in position where they all meet up at Lexi's house, I believe. And yep. he uh, creates this uh, essentially like herbicide bomb. And there he has them all as hostages. But Jake has also this little step, well, adopted step sibling. Um, as well that's in the foster home who is also on the spectrum and so Chucky is holding them hostage but he events happen where it's like kind of free and then the kid uh essentially gets blown up um just because he he's just like in a bad spot and yeah so it was it was really sad because he just didn't know better um so with that all three of them get sent to this. It's not a boarding school. It's like a 
Christian reform school. It was like yeah, Catholic boarding reform school, the the Church of the Incarnate Lord. Yes. With, I gotta say right now, if it's something like that, that sounds really culty. And I'm just like, no, uh uh-uh. uh, anywhere <laughs> but there. Also, that uh church is essentially the same place that Charles Lee Ray was raised at. Mm-hmm. So and, yeah. Ooh. So there's two important things with that. So with that, they were recommended by a doctor, a therapist to go there instead of just like going to juvenile, which was the original plan. And then also Lexi, we see has a a drug problem and she's like she crushes pills and snorts them, which is like, oof, uh, especially just compared to today where, you know, all the fentanyl and opioid overdose is like rampant. So just even with that, it's not like too late in the season. Like we found out really early that the doctor is in on it. Um, so she's working with Chucky and Chucky wants them all in one place, which is why they go to the church of incarnate Lord instead of uh, the a juvenile. Juvie. Yeah. But yeah. So of course we get that. And then we also get to see like just more side shenanigans between uh, Tiffany and essentially like what happens with her is that th- her real life tiffany's like tiffany's uh children who non-binary is actually like glenn and glenda who was actually originally a doll and seat the doll and seed of chucky yep. whose soul got split in two into two children so so essentially like glenn and glenda are both non-binary glenn Appears more feminine, Glenn Dub appears more masculine, and they're coming over to check on their mother, uh, and with actually a real secret agenda, which we're gonna mm-hmm. get into shortly. But that's not before there was like a whole episode dedicated to all the like all of Jennifer Tilly's real life friends and <laughs> actress actors and real life sister. Yes. who all like played in different movies that Jennifer Tilly starred in, specifically Bound. Uh, and if you know about that movie, you know. Uh, so if you if you're a child, do not watch that movie. Um, <laughs> but if you are a child, why are you listening to this episode? So, but yeah. So with that, right, you essentially have like shenanigans there, murders taking place over there, and then we cut back to. Kirk back to the, the church of the cult of church, Chucky. I'm gonna call it that because yeah. everybody there was on some op activity. Well, almost everybody, because the head father is played by Devin Sawa. Boy, get that bag. <laughs> he getting that bag. I swear, if he doesn't return for the next season, I'm no. We're gonna talk about that one. We're gonna talk about that whenever we get into that discussion. But like. Mm. We, it has to be a recurring meme at this point because <laughs> Jake even says like, hold up, this father looking kind of familiar. Like, I can't quite put my finger on. I'm like, oh, really? You can't recognize your own dad? That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so of course, they're in boarding school. Uh, Jake is pretty much dealing with survivor's guilt P- and PTSD from the fact like, hey, he got his own brother basically killed by Chucky. Mm-hmm. So essentially like with that and of course like him being in church whatnot and having church classes he essentially like goes you know like hey whatever i can do like to redeem myself i'm mm-hmm. gonna do it i'm just like uh, uh that's that's not a good look that's not a good look but i see what Don Mancini is going for with that uh and of course Devin, pretty much he's just over it he over all chucky shenanigans yeah uh and and like that's ca- slowly causing a rift between him and Jake. Also, due to the fact that Jake like pretty much kept canceling on them because in the course of the year, all the the main trio were like slowly drifting apart. Like they yeah. hadn't seen each other in a long time, especially Jake and Devin since they're the couple, and like they're not getting getting along. They're getting into fights more often. Uh, and then you got Lexi whose roommate is one of my favorites, Nadine. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord have mercy, because Nadine, she's there because she's a kleptomaniac, always trying to steal stuff. 
uh and she's like really bubbly she's like has a really positive outlook great personality and she's the perfect foil for lexi because of that like hey she's like the main one she's like the heart because she gets pulled into the shenanigans immediately yeah when, when chucky tries to run their pockets uh and like she's the main one to help lexi with her drug problem because the reason why she's taking drugs is because you know she's full of anxiety and stress from all of the from all the chucky shenanigans from her overbearing mother and dead and parent if, dead ex you know yep dead dead dad dead junior and then also it revealed with the sight of like seeing like her friends drifting apart from one another including her that's all like spiraling and that's why she has a drug problem yep. and also with her dealing with her past uh behavior which again give for never forget uh yeah. like that's gonna follow you to your grave just like <laughs> just like hank pym slapping uh his <laughs> comics nobody's gonna let him forget it and neither shall we with lexi uh but yeah so that's basically yes. like slowly what's going on with them so to streamline season two uh just because this is a brief recap uh so on one end on the church of incarnate or uh, she, we see that there is Chucky. There are multiple Chuckies that keep infiltrating the church at different times. And we see that it's not just at random, but they seem to be working for a person or like there's a specific purpose because they're not killing Jake or like all the other main trio. They're just kind of taking pictures, being creepy, stalking them. And so they managed to capture one and they proceed to clockwork orange him. And ah, to watch him. <laughs> that brain bleach worked. So like they make him into a good Chucky that's on their side. And then with that, we see another Chucky infiltrates and he is buff beyond belief and putting donuts in people, which he did was not wild. skip arm day. He did not skip leg day. He did not have a rest day at all. He just always stays in the gym. He drinks nothing but protein <laughs> shakes. He eats nothing but raw eggs and and just meat because this man was pure f muscle. Absolutely. So, yeah. So he literally put a donut in um, one of Lexi's old bullies. And so just keeping it streamlined. So we see that they're working for someone called the Colonel. And this is another Chucky doll that survived the explosion um, that started season two with Andy and the doll truck. So with that, the colonel is bald and we, uh, Lexi and Devin go out of the church. They try to escape, but they see that uh, not only is the therapist working for Chucky, but Chucky also has Andy uh, captured within it. And it, apparently it's been over a year. And this Chucky, the colonel, who is bald, has been eating Andy uh, for survival, which was uh, <laughs> disgusting, uh, like literal cannibalism, just like taking a slice of his leg and eating him. So they free Andy bring him back to uh, the church and in order to like um, go up against them, then going to the other parallel, not timeline, but plot. One of my favorite plots of the season, like the Jennifer Tilly episode, where it's just her was one of my favorite episodes of the season. Cause it was just so well acted. Um, but with that Glenn and Glenda, they are working with uh, Nika. And so they start to see that Nika also has their dad in them. And they're learning more about themselves because they don't know that they used to be adult, but they have these reoccurring dreams of when they were. And it takes scenes from Seed of Chucky to do that. So essentially, they want to escape from Tiffany with that. And they do manage to succeed, but one of them stays, I believe it's Glenn. It's, yep, it's Glenn. Glenn stays with uh, Tiffany and Glenda goes with Nika. And we also see that Kyle is still alive. Uh, she survived the explosion in the house that thought we got them. So with that, they try to go to the church of the curse of Chucky, <laughs> cult of Chucky, uh, in order to transfer the soul um, out of Nika into a Chucky doll, which would free Nika. And then just like Tiffany and Golden, right? Yeah, or like they're she's trying to they are trying to reform them, so that kind of converges into like some of the finales of the season. Yeah, and in the finale of it, of course, things go sideways real quickly. The brainwashed good Chucky, you know, you think was was good all along. Um, it turns out a he 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 wasn't he 
or maybe he was in the brainwashing, started wearing off, and his true personality was coming back. But R.I.P. to a real one. R.I.P. to to young Nadine. She got put on a t-shirt. And Lord. She, and she got put on a t-shirt and was was pretty much put in the place of Jesus on the <laughs> statue. A statue of Virgin Mary cradling dead Jesus. It was, I was like, bruh. Oh, uh, wow. mm-hmm. And of course, the father, Mr. Devin Sawa, he he actually, him and the main like nun, she, like both of them, they again get pulled into the shenanigans. They end up believing uh, all of them about the about Chucky, sh- the Chucky uh, show. Uh, <laughs> yes. About the Chucky show. And Essentially, like what happened is that what happens is that uh they end up performing an exorcism on the good Chucky doll. Yep. They'll pretty much take the soul out of it and send and send that thing straight to hell. But that's <laughs> but, not uh, what happened. But that is not what happened at all. Instead, the father gets possessed by Chucky, a la the Exorcist movie, and yes. instead of doing the head tilt. He said, does the head explosion? Uh, and you're just like, fam, what? Yes. <laughs> like, bro. Exactly. Like, I didn't even know how that happened. So, yeah, father, dead. Uh, and oh. then Nika gets the soul of Chucky cast out of her into that doll. Mm-hmm. Of course, the uh, of course, the, the doctor, she ends up taking good Chucky. Well, taking Pr- Chucky Prime out yes. because Colonel gets taken out like a light by Andy. Even though um, we don't see it, which is sad. Well, we don't see how Chucky... Like, we don't... Like, we know how he died and, like, uh, like because, like, Andy, he took the knife and then we saw that uh, Colonel Chucky was going in, but, like, we don't see it actually happen. We just see him, Oh, like, yeah, yeah. You, know, you just see... Stupid. stupid. We just see him stupid. <laughs> yep, later. yep. Yep, seeing the last moments of the Vietnam War. Uh, but yeah, so like with that, right, you dig, and then you get this crazy nun who ends up getting, I guess, initiated into the cult of Chucky. But she was already off the rocker, be honest with you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who else like sees Jesus in a pancake hey, yo! and decide like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna worship that now. I'm just like, nah, nah, nah. You, you, you own something else. Uh, but yeah, so like, she ends up going joining the cult of Turkey. Tries to take out Lexi, nope, with the strap. But nah, Glenda decides to step in and decides to shoot her shot or or shoot their shot. My my apologies, my fault. Decides to shoot their shot, and playing playing darts and. Have you ever seen The Expendables? Yes, I have. Yes, sir. (laughs) Right through the eye. So she gets taken out, and then they go and try, and Andy ends up pulling the blicky out, taking out Chucky, and a nat 20 scene, just jaw gone. Bang, bang, bang. And he's like, yeah. They they unloaded the clip on Chucky. (laughs) Yeah, the clip was unloaded. Um, of course, Tiff- Tiffany is well straight now, like mm-hmm. because yeah, straight now. Uh, we also forget that Tiffany. We see the Tiffany at all. In it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like the original Belle Tiffany doll was with the Doctor, which which should have clued you in that she was on op activity because like no one else had that doll. As soon as yep. I saw, I'm like, hold on, why you got that doll? Why you got that specific doll? Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, nah, she's on op activity. But uh, but yeah, so but yeah, like at the end of it, right? Glenn ends up getting shot. Mm-hmm. So, so unfortunately, because of that, Glenn gets into the hospital and is put in a medically induced coma. Of course, Tiffany in distraught, Glenda in distraught, and then af- and of course, like, oh yeah, and that's pr- oh yeah, and that's because of the fact that. Nika was the one that shot them because yes. she was trying to shoot Tiffany because she got her body back and was like, "Nah, I'm t- I'm pulling I'm pulling the strap out on all who wronged me." Yeah, you cut my limbs off. You gotta go. Yes, again, never forget. 
Blah Blicky is is strapped for everybody. These mm-hmm. hands were rated E for everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, it cuts to the next episode. Everybody thinks that they're free now. Uh, you know, Jake and Devin, they finally like work it out. Mm-hmm. Of course, like, yeah, work it out. Lexi finally gets her act together, go to rehab, and uh and and things seem to be good. Things seem to be nice. Yep. Until the last episode. Yep. It popped off on the low. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was that was messed up. So it, it turns out they did like they open it with a flashback to the previous episode where presumably Chucky dies. But we see that in the interim between where the doctor took off with Chucky Prime and where uh, Chucky was shot. He he punched her, which was actually funny. I'm like, yo, how is again? How is he this strong? He punched her out. Then he performed the spell, switch bodies with her. So the last moments of that Chucky doll's life was actually the last moments of the doctor's life. So then he takes out the OG uh, good guy doll, changes his body, and then so essentially he's like, okay, I'm gonna get you during Christmas time. And with that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so with the mom, Lexi, and her mom, there's a really good scene where she, like, just gets it off her chest. She's like, yo, I blamed you for everything, um, but I now see that you were also under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and I have to take ownership of my own BS. And so, like, they make peace with it, and it's such a touching scene. And then the very next moment, Chucky sneaks into the house. Tiffany also sneaks into the house because she's looking for the, uh, the Bell doll. Chucky sneaks into the house. Uh, The mom comes down. She's talking to Tiffany. I don't know, like Jennifer Tilly. And I don't know why she uh, was like, yo, why are you in my house? Uh, Again, I would have been strapped immediately. I was like, instead of seeing like, hello, as soon as I see somebody who shouldn't be, (laughs) why are you here? So then um, aren't you dead? So they're talking. Yes. And Chucky, he has this quiet chainsaw proceeds to jump off the railing. Uh, Jennifer saw it, but she didn't warn her. I mean, she had no reason to, even though she was upset and proceeds to saw the mom in half vertically. Uh, So then just with that chaos pops off, uh, gosh, Lexi proceeds to uh, dice his face up with the chainsaw. (laughs) And then uh, we get to the scene where Jake and Devin, they stab Jennifer as she goes up because do they think she's Chucky or are they just like caught off guard? I was oh, no, no, no. It seemed like they knew that Tiffany okay, was, it was there. It was really weird because it's like they did it at first and then they just completely stopped. And I, I think was it's like, because they they didn't either. They knew that Tiffany was there or and were trying to be sadistic with it or they they thought that it was just Chucky stabbed Tiffany. It was like, oh, oh, that's, you here, too. That's okay, what I thought it was. Yes. That's what I thought it was. And then Jake was like, OK, call the um call the ambulance and Devin this whole season has been like yo anybody Chucky related gotta go like we're not we're not doing that but he's like, he's, so he's like okay it's good you're so lucky he's good then all of a sudden little sister pops up and looks like she's not on the spectrum anymore apparently and is an evil mastermind so she like she came with the butcher knife gave it to Jennifer Tilly was like put it to my throat and it's like okay everybody else dropped the weapons I'm about to go with my real mom because Chucky told me that and so then she uh, proceeds off with Jennifer Tilly, and that's essentially how season two ends. Am I missing anything from that? Yeah, just two quick things. Just one is that uh, after Glenn got shot and put in the coma, Glenn yeah. and Glenda both get their souls essentially reunited and put into the body of the Glenn doll from Seed of Chucky and go by Gigi now, and then they take off. Then you can got. I, can, can I be real with you? I yeah. think that the Glenn doll is the creepiest of all the Chucky dolls, just because of the design. I mean, it, I, it's even creepier than like the Chucky with stitches faces to me. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense because the the Chucky with stitches was just trying too hard. the <laughs> The regular Chucky, I'm used to it now. The Glenn doll, again, that's the second time you ever see that specific doll. So, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah, it does. But uh. But yeah, they and then they leave Tiffany. Oh yeah, then there's the do- the original uh Tiffany doll that contains the soul of Jennifer Tilly, the actress, <laughs> ends up committing suicide. 
Then there's also the fact that uh Miss Fairchild comes back and say and pretty much is now the caregiver of Jake, Devin, and Lexi. And like pretty much in their care, they tell her about Chucky. And he's like, Yeah, I know. I've encountered Chucky before. I'm like, hold on, what? Mm-hmm. Uh and then and then finally, of course, Tiffany, she gets a hold of that unpossessed bell doll. Mm-hmm. And then she <laughs> and then she ends up going with Caroline to a place in New York to transfer her soul into. Of course, Nika already was on timing. She was like, Oh yeah, I see you, Tiffany. How well, how that doll treating you, my girl? <laughs> I was like, hey, we and Tiffany was like, hey, you you good? He's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna be straight. <laughs> when I pluck your eyes out, chop off your limbs, and then you see how good I'm gonna be, my gal. Mm-hmm. I'll make sure it's slow. I'm like, oh snap, she on oh yeah, oh yeah, it's on site. Demon time. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's on site. That's my girl, that's my girl. But and then Tiffany tries to transfer her soul into the bell doll. But it doesn't work. Mm-mm. You want to know why it doesn't work? Because that was not the Bell doll. That mm. was Chucky in disguise. He was pulling some 5D chess maneuvers, <laughs> some Sosuke eyes and moderate oh, okay. uh, yes. levels of forward planning. My plans have plans. And he said, like, oh yeah, no, nah, I knew you was gonna come after me sooner or later. Mm-hmm. So I just waited. And as soon as you tried it, I'm come I'ma come after you. And presumably she's dead now. Yeah. So so that's the end of season two. Yeah. So he saw the chessboard way before she way before it even played out. So just with that, um, how much longer could and should they keep it going do you think honestly like they like psh, diamond scene he probably can keep this going for like ages he could keep this going because basically like with this point like you can make it like the whole saga of like jake Devin, and lexi all growing up and taking down chucky now would i want that to happen absolutely not like <laughs> i say like i'd want it to go like maybe one maybe yeah, maybe like one more season longer. But knowing Chucky's profitable, I'll give them two. Because yeah, because Chucky is money. And and like this can be a story of like how they finally take down this last Chucky mm-hmm. or they go around and try to find like all other survivors of the different child's play movies. Cause there are surprising surprisingly more that haven't been seen. Mm. since the movie that they were in yeah with that i'm kind of with you Mm. ideally i would want one more season i think they might go to let the series wait and then we'll see another movie at some point um maybe five ten years down the line i wouldn't be surprised um they'll probably maybe even do a gg spinoff um just like because they set that up to do that but um, just like with season two, like season one, there was like everything seemed to serve a purpose. But with season two, like the colonel, they built it up as such a big thing. And then he kind of just like he didn't die off screen. But again, he got the like, action of him getting killed was off screen. He just died. They just kind of dropped that um, buffs. Buff Chucky was going to fight Swole. I mean, yeah, Swole Chucky was going to fight the colonel. But then it was just like, yeah, I put our cynic in the snack that you wanted. And it's like, when did this happen? Um, so there's just like different things like that. The uh, priest getting just like exploded. I feel like they were so over the top in certain moments where it was just like, you didn't need to do this um, in terms of the story. It felt like more shock value. Uh, like even the one scene with like the Jennifer Tilly where I really liked it. Um, and since I watch wrestling, like the scene where he like stabbed Liv Morgan and it like goes to talk show. Like since I know that yeah. person, it was pretty funny, but it's just like so takes you out of it in a sense. So I think just one just to keep the story simple and streamlined for that. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Whew. But yeah. Uh, hey, let's let's go ahead and let's get started with these awards, shall we? Yeah, so cue the laughter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And so for my first award, I am going to the op of the year. So you did mention Lexi, who is a high level op, um, but they they tried as best they could to redeem her. You feel how you feel with that. I think they went too far in making you hate her and want Jake to uh, kind of take her out at the beginning uh, to then like flip the Uno reverse card on us. But it has to be Chucky. I mean, like he's been opping on Andy and Kyle for decades since this decades. boy was 10 like obsessed with this man like also what you mean like uh the sosuke eyes and just like yeah i knew what you were going to do i'm putting my bodies here um just opting on his own uh doctor who is there for him since he was a child just using people like you he cannot be trusted <laughs> chucky is the only op he is the op above ops <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Chucky, come to the stage and get this away. The only op whose biggest op is himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so for my first award, it's actually got to be the humbling. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 a new award that we have is where a character essentially goes through so much <laughs> like this has to be a character that you either super hate or is like super cocky or arrogant they go through so much that they pull a 180 in personality and you just and you just see that like that switch and you're just like yeah they got humbled so bad that they they now they now passive mm -hmm. this goes to none other than lexi none no in fact i gonna pull your whole government name Alexandra Cross. Ooh. Yeah, Lexi, I'm coming. Yeah, this is your humbling because, again, throughout the entire show, I kept mentioning, never forget, because you did my boy Jake so dirty throughout most of season one. That was out of pocket. Especially with the dad costume. Like, that That was too far. I, I, I could not let you forget that. I don't think you ever will forget that. But, but the amount of development you had to where I started I started slightly liking you towards the end, to where I I'm just like in, I'm endeared to you in the second season. I'm just like, how, how, to to the point where you said in the finale of season two that you love Jake and Devin. I'm just like, wow, you would never do that before, and but you have but you are now. So I am. So I am su supremely honored to give you, Le Alexandra Cross, the humbling. Yes, I would say it's definitely because of the, the in season two, where out of all the people, she was the one where it's like, you know, why are we growing apart so much? And just like, is Chucky the only thing that keeps us together? And that really helped because like you felt that friendship that she or like at least care like this is a family to me because my own family is either dead or hates me so for the next one the gruesome death award <clears throat> we have mentioned it twice and it can go to none other than the father exploding it was there is a lot of deaths this is a chucky tv show um again kids you should not be watching this except if you're meech his younger self so nope. only so, young me can watch it yes yeah, so the father just exploded and it was just like blood everywhere and it, just the exorcism i mean like again if you've seen the exorcism the puke part uh started so a lot of bodily fluids everywhere and literally I was originally going to give this moment the jump the shark award, um, a moment where the show jumped the shark, but I'm sticking with the gruesome death award. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was no ifs, ands, or buts about that one because that, that came literally straight out of nowhere. <laughs> and and that literally just had me go, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. How? How? How I didn't know Chucky had this this power. How sway? How sway? <laughs> but but yeah, but yeah. Father, Father Devin Sawa, come get this award. So you have to recombine yourself to get it, but <laughs> <laughs> all your pieces. But uh, but yeah. So for my final award, it's the teamwork makes the dream work. 
Yes, sir. This is an award that goes to whenever a collective group all gets together and then they just accomplish a goal and they did what they set out to do. I'm giving this award to everybody involved in that exorcism scene. So <laughs> Father Devin Sawa, the nun, Jake, Devin, Lexi, the spirit of Nadine who came back to encourage Lexi. I'm giving it to Glenn, Glenda, Tiffany. Uh, who who else was involved in that? The oh doctor, yeah, the, the doc. Yeah, technically the doctor. I even though she did absolutely nothing. Uh, and oh yeah, Nika. Yes. And Andy and Kyle. Other Chucky. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, both Chucky's. All y'all accomplished the goal of putting Chucky in one body. Oh, what was the other sister? The black sister. Oh, I forgot her name, but like she was the one that I mentioned after the fa- father yes. Devin Sawa. The good but, one. Yes, the the good one. The the sister, sister nun. Uh, <laughs> but yes, like she, all of them came together, and they made sure to put the op, which is Chucky, into one body and into the grave. Uh, so all of y'all, basically the entire cast of season two, come come get this award. So just with that, we're not going to get about tears to the show, uh, just since we're keeping it brief. But right now we turn to our horror aficionado for our random, <laughs> for our random <laughs> second theory. <laughs> okay, okay, I got, I got it. All right. Woo! All right. Rain it in. Rain it in. Uh, essentially, it's all about our teacher, Miss Fairchild. Like, I, I, it made me wonder. Like, hold up, you said you had an encounter with Chucky before. I'm like, how? How swayed? So I had to go back. I had I rewatched every single movie, mm. and I may have a compelling argument that she was actually in a previous movie, specifically Child's Play Three. Mm, that's the one that's like my memory doesn't remember the most yeah so if you don't recall child's play 3 is the one where andy gets sent to a military boarding school Mm -hmm. and it's actually a co-ed school so there i looked around and there were actually quite a few uh like male and like few females and quite a few who were redheads as well now could could that have been one who was could she one of them be a Miss Fairchild? Possibly because there was only one that I saw in the scene where Chucky pretty much started wilding out. Or so it could be her or it could be another one who pretty much didn't get to see it but because of the fact that one of the main that really two of the main characters in that movie also attended that boarding school, one of which was uh, the female lead mm-hmm. and was actually friends with the redhead. It could very well be that she's one of that she was went to that boarding school and she could have learned about Chucky through them. So, yeah, that's my theory is that Miss Fairchild was in Child's Play 3. That's interesting. Out of all the movies, that probably would be the one. I feel like that's the movie that's talked about the least and. It's like also right between the shift. Like, yeah. Charles one play one, Charles play two are like really like peak of the Chucky, all of the Chucky movies, and, and then in the horror, yeah, yeah. So then in the Bride of Chucky, that's when it like it changes up a little bit, just like storytelling wise, and like creates more memorable characters. Yeah. And Went then Seed the of Chucky angle, yep. So then Seed of Chucky as well with that uh, angle, and then just like Cult and Curse are kind of. Uh, and so then I don't. Oh, yeah. You said that the new Child's Play movie isn't his canon because of like, no, uh, studio issues. Yeah. So, so that's definitely interesting to pull from that one. I definitely want to recheck out Child's Play 3 because I haven't seen that one in a super long time. So, yeah. Right. Right. I had, to, I had to go dig. I had to go to the whale for that one. So, yeah, I really like that one. So for our next part, we're just going to keep it going and talk about the main uh, for our main portion two, the killer doll toy discussion. So why are these the creepiest monsters? 
Oh, man. Uh, I think it has to do with two factors. Actually, no, scratch that, make it three. Number one is the fact that these are like toys or dolls that are used primarily by children, which, and of course, as we know, all children are monsters. <laughs> oh, keeping the cancel train going. I ain't making it. We ain't making another season, y'all. But uh, You're tracking me down with you. You darn right. Uh, but but really, it's because of the fact like, hey, they represent innocence, which like again, part two. Like they represent innocence, they represent childhood and playfulness, and can pull on that that tug string, especially when you see it turn and be used for something for evil. Uh and then number three is the uncanny valley. Mm. To see something that's like vaguely humanoid doing human like things and try to be as close to human as possible, and you just go like something ain't right. Like yo <laughs> like yo survival instincts and your your red flags are just blaring at that point. So mm -hmm. that's why I think like they're some of the creepiest ones. Yeah, for me, I think just like also in the storylines is because in every child play Chucky movie, there's always like the beginning of the Chucky where it's like, OK, he starts doing this mysterious acts. And it's like when people start dying, they go, the kids go, oh, Chucky did it. And then any mostly sane person would go like, oh, you're a kid, you're making this up. Um, mm -hmm. Just like we see it in a lot of movies, we see it in real life where it's like, OK, so your imagination is activate it to cover that trauma or whatnot so it's like i don't believe you so then the kid is like yo chucky did it chucky did it chucky did it this doll did it uh annabelle as we get to kind of later and it's just like no you did it because it's a doll it doesn't exist and then they always have that scene where they have to prove to the kid that it's not real so it'll be like uh we saw it in season two where it's like uh let's just get rid of the chucky doll right and it's like no i'm gonna put it right here on my desk it's gonna sit right here don't touch it and so now it's just like, or it's like, it's going to sit here right in your room. Don't get rid of it. Um, sit here. And then even with the scenes where it's like, they throw, there's always a scene where they throw them in the trash and then it pops right back out. And it's like, how did it get here? What are you doing? So that was just like, it's just creepy from that because you can't explain it in like a rational way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Especially in that first movie. That was the one where they took that just to 11 because yes. I think the original intent of the movie was that like you weren't supposed to know if it was either the doll or if it was Andy. Mm. And the and like it imagine like if you did not see that first scene at all where Charles Lee White Ray put his soul inside the doll and you just left it alone, or you like you put that scene somewhere else in the movie, you would not be able to tell. Yeah. You would not know if it was them. And that's perhaps like probably the king d d idea is like, is my child actually becoming a sociopath? Yeah. Is my child becoming a killer? No, please. And mm -hmm. that's what, and that's why children are all monsters because you can never know. You never and, know their next move. And it has like that famous scene where the um woman, she, she has oh, the yeah, doll the in front can. of. Yeah, right in front of the fireplace. And she's like, yep. if you're real, tell me. And then I can't quote it directly. But no, you can't. It's like, rah, you, you know. filthy beep, you beep, beep. <laughs> oh, I'll teach you to beep with me. <laughs> and, oh, then he puts it in, and he just goes crazy because he's on fire. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So with that, we kind of did already talk about just the threshold on the dolls of in a person's house. Anything else you want to add to that? Again, all I'm saying is, uh, I you you would never catch me with one. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. You never gonna catch me with one. If I see one in the house, it's either disappearing or I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no mannequins in the garage either. <laughs> nope. Uh. Uh. Especially not the garage. No. That's where all oh, my tools are. No. 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 So with that, we can get into the different types of killer dolls. So um, we kind of listed them and we can talk about it uh, as we uh, progress, but possessed by a human, which we have with uh, Chucky, demonic vessel, and then toy or AI gone wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, all of these are pretty much straightforward. So like the possessed by human, again, that's obviously your Chucky's. That's obviously, you know, the ones where, hey, I was... Hey, I'm just transferring my soul or a piece of myself into the doll, and then, and and boom, you you screwed. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
and that's where and I think like that one's yeah because and yes say Chucky's the pioneer he is the apex of a uh, of pretty much the pioneer of the killer toy genre yep uh, and that's pretty much all it is about that one uh next is the demonic vessel that's pretty much all your cursed and haunted house dolls um that's all the ones where uh like that's always your annabelles that's your your dead silence billy uh that's the boy too <laughs> oh, sorry 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 i almost threw up in my mouth there for a second that disgusting to you yep yep oh yeah the possessed by human that's the that's all the puppets in the puppet master franchise mm-hmm. uh even though that was not really a reveal to like i think like the the fourth or fifth movie down the line that was real to be possessed by people but okay. yeah demonic vessels of course your, yeah your annabelles which i will i'll murder um <laughs> like set on fire okay. <laughs> billy the puppet from dead science uh we don't know what slappy was in a uh, goosebumps but he i'm a, yeah but i'm assume he was the demonic vessel type all right <laughs> you got <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Uh almost threw up again for mentioning that movie. And <laughs> and then probably the piece de resistance. That darn clown from Poltergeist. Oh my gosh. You everybody here knows about that clown. You know, you know. If you don't, you too young to be listening to this episode. <laughs> because I think everybody here. Like I know my sister been traumatized by that clown, and then and I was just disturbed by that clown. <laughs> and mind you, I'm the horror aficionado, and I got disturbed by that clown. I mean, it's like two fierce clowns and dolls. So All, yeah, just rolled in one. And he's just like, and I told my fans was like, hey, if you ever get me that doll, just know it is going to the farthest regions of this earth. It's <laughs> getting <shadow here>. <laughs> Yeah, it is going. All the way on the other side of the city, I am throwing, I am making sure it doesn't come back. And if it does, I am gone. I am leaving. That's how bad it is with that clown and my recollections with it. If if you want to uh, discuss like some some mental trauma with that one. Uh, yes, and then finally we have the toy or a. AI gone wrong. So with that, the new Child's Play movie, which I haven't seen, but it's essentially an AI gone wrong. It has our boy um, Mark, Mark Hamill, Hamill in it. So it wasn't the most saving grace. I heard it's not good at all. So um, so that you have that. Then also Megan, which will be coming out soon. We can have a mini discussion on that after. And anything else you want to add? Oh, yeah. There's also Small Soldiers. If you. Yes, I was thinking of that. Small Soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. If you remember that movie. I love that movie. uh, Yeah. But then there's this one, which uh, (laughs) which I couldn't figure out which category to put it. I just put this one in a category of its own and it's titled Finley. (laughs) If you know, you know about the greatness that is Finley. <laughs> Finley is the best. He is the killer doll. I say he more fit. I say he better than Chucky. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not even lie to you. He he's the wildest one. He he making Chucky seem like a like like a novice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just uh oh, it brings a tear to my eye every time I think about family. Yeah. Uh, if you know, you know. So with that, we cover just a brief discussion. Um, what, what do you think we can expect from Megan? Oh man, uh pretty much for me, I think it's gonna go exactly what you'd expect for any of the toy slash AI gone wrong movie categories, where in which hey, this AI is probably gonna slowly become human. Uh, or like try and it's going to get to the point where they start trying to either kill everybody around that main character like you may get to a point where like this like the main girl she's going to anger Megan in some way to where now she's a target mm-hmm. and then you get to the point where uh, it's like somehow Megan's going to get disfigured in some way shape or fashion 
and then it turns into the Terminator. Uh, <laughs> and and yeah, and also, and, but it comes with the added bonus of Megan slaying on everybody and everywhere. Them dance moves. I I keep I tell everybody this. If I ever see a see somebody doing them TikTok dances on me while they're killing me, I'll be so mad. I will be so upset. I will actually come back from the dead in order to kill. I will literally become the man literally too angry to die meme. Because mm-hmm. that would that would become me if if somebody tried to try to TikTok dance on me while they slice and dice me. I'm like, nah, nah, I ain't going out like no punk. She's looking saucy on there. There's gonna be TikToks after that movie comes out. Don't don't even worry about it. Uh so yeah, I think I think one thing that's gonna be slightly different is that from the trailers, obviously the trailers don't necessarily follow the movie, but it seems like the mom or the adult figure in the trailer seems to be onto Megan from the beginning. Um and just with that, since it's not like a fake doll, well not yep. a fake doll, but a non-lifelike an doll. Android. And yeah, since it's an AI, there are interactions with it. So you know it can be like oh, she has, she can actually move. She can actually do these things. The only question is, is she capable of doing it? So that's going to be interesting. I, I'm i probably going to check it out at some point. Uh, as we mentioned, when this episode comes out, it's going to be like the very next week. So it'll be really cool to see. So that wrapping up our discussion, it's time for a segment that has been far too long. We've been handing out the awards during our movie recaps, but we haven't had the segment as it was in its original incarnations so i don't know what's about to happen next maybe we put on the size 12s maybe we put on the size threes but i can hear some stomping some quick steps happening it's the return of the black air force segment ah yes it's a it's a segment that's long since been overdue my dear listeners and of course, with what this episode is based on, there's there's only one person that can get this award. It's not other than Charles Lee Ray, Chucky himself. This 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 man's an op. He's an op in every sense of the word. Hands rated E for everybody, because like I don't know if you knew this, but like in the beginning, right? He he was obsessed with this one chick, and and like because of his obsession, like he managed to kidnap this woman stab her in the womb cause the child to get paralyzed you could tell like hey he was already on some odd behavior this person like charles e ray he killed his own mother in the closet as a child he was taking cues from michael myers he said oh nah i'm, I'm going beyond sister i'm going with my mama because she an op I want to know what it's like to be on some op behavior. I want to be initiated into the clan of Black Air Forces. And of course, you did do that over the course of your life. Managed to brainwash a whole woman into into changing her whole voice into becoming Tiffany. Oh, oh, let's. And this is all just while you were human. When you become a doll, you will, your Black Air Forces may have decreased to a size threes, but the but the effects multiply by times 800 because at this point you you said oh nah women can get it or elderly people can get it in terms of that teacher in child's play 2 even children can get it because you tried to take out andy multiple times you tried to take out tyler in part three multiple times even even when yo when your whole body gets burnt to a crisp, your head gets shot off, you you kept going as an op to murk anybody who stands in your way. I remember when, when you decided to go out to try to kill Andy in part two in the factory. You had your legs taken out, you had your hand taken out. You got sprayed on with molten plastic, and then even with your head blown up, that still didn't kill you. You were just there. You decided and said, nah, I'ma still keep coming, and you came back multiple times. Do I even need to mention Seed of Chucky when you killed Britney Spears? You murked 
the new generation queen of pop. All because she cut you off in traffic. Sir, what type of op is that? What type of babe? You taught your own child how to murder all because you said, hey, it's in the genes. And when your son was not about that, you said, all right, all right. Well, aside it is, I'm coming after your child, my own child. Even they weren't safe. And when you decide to transfer your body into multiple Chucky dolls, that only increased the, the effect of your black air forces. Cause now you are Mr. Unlimited, Mr. Worldwide, going out into the streets and deciding to mark anybody who is under the age of 15. You going after children, sir. Sir, I don't even know what else to say because you are voiced by a goat, Brad Dorif. I don't know what else to say. You have done so much in your life and in your afterlife. You have two seasons of a acclaimed TV show. This is something that Michael Myers doesn't have. This is something that Jason is just now getting. And this is something Freddy only had one season of in the past. <laughs> and you got two seasons and a even bruh bruh e here's how you know you a menace right even lawsuits couldn't stop you even legal disputes can't stop you because you said oh i'm owned by basically two separate people all right i'm gonna have two separate timelines two separate killer realities and as you mentioned don't forget when you killed uh when you killed that wrestler live on tv uh-uh nah nah come Come get these black air, these uh, these size two black air forces. You deserve them. And uh, sir, if you if you want a new inductee into the into your cult, uh, I'm fully willing. I'm just not willing to hand over my body to you. Uh, but I will uh, you know, direct you to a much more capable host. Uh, his his initials are J V. <laughs> Welcome to the round table. Oh, I love it. Yeah, definitely a most worthy host and aware of the Black Forces. So with that, we are wrapping up this episode and just going to get into our recommendations. So for me, the recommendations that I have, it's purely just going to be the movies that you mentioned and all of the Chucky movies. So Child's Play 1, Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, uh, Bride of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, and then Cult of Chucky. Is there a Revenge of Chucky? Nope. Okay, so uh, just making that up. And then Chucky Season 1 and Chucky Season 2, I'm not entirely sure where they're located at, but you can Google that, people. Yep, yep. And then for me, uh, of course, I'm also going to mention, you know, the Conjuring films. If you want to see, like, more uh, dolls and killer dolls, of course, the Conjuring film verse, that includes Annabelle, you know, the Conjuring and everything about that. That's all found on HBO Max. Yep. Uh, you got Poltergeist, Dead Silence, Ghost Goosebumps. I believe those are also on uh, HBO Max. Or I think Goosebumps should be because Cartoon Network is a part of Warner Brothers. Right. So I believe those are. Uh, and then if you want to see the greatest killer doll of all time, Finley, you can look at that horror movie short on YouTube. Uh, it's only 30 minutes long, but those 30 minutes feel like 10 minutes because mm -hmm. good Lord, go it, good Lord. But, <laughs> but yeah, so but yeah, I guess now it's time for the plugs. Yep. Uh, so hit us with it. All right. So with the plugs, right, we got ourselves our Instagram and Twitter at blurred city 22, you know, that's of course, come give us a follow, give us a like, subscribe to all of our posts, be updated with all our information and whatnot. We have ourselves our Discord, which is also linked in the Instagram page. And that's where you can join an amazing community where you can submit your random fan theories, your geek out freakouts, your own submissions for the podcast. You know, you also get it. And then we also have our youtube and our patreon 
you know, with Blurred City Pod, you know, especially with the Patreon, you can give us, you know, some support, a little bit of cheddar, and and then that'll help us stave off Chucky. Uh, and and with that, you'll be able to listen to very exclusive episodes that may or may not ever appear on our Spotify, our Spotify, and our main uh our main podcast page. Mm-hmm. So please give us a shout out on there. And then finally, we have our email, blurredcity22 at gmail.com. That's where you can submit questions for our Q&A sessions, which I am going to highlight. Please submit questions because that is going to be a wild episode, <laughs> yes. especially considering the last time when I kind of got on a uh, tirade that will never be forgotten. Um <laughs> In fact, some of my uh, some of our dear listeners, they they won't they won't let me forget it either. So <laughs> so I'm not letting y'all forget it. So there's that. You can submit all the aforementioned things that I mentioned on the discord as well. And then finally, for my personal page, right, I have the Rogue Jedi 21 on TikTok. You get to see some content exclusive to your boy. All vo- all voice acting, all uh funny memes, you get to see it all just just wild out. And especially coming in 2023, I'm about to upload more. So yeah, what you got? Yep, for my personal author pages, we have uh my Instagram, Mitri underscore dash. So M-E-T-R-I underscore D-A-S-H. And for my Twitter, we have at the Matt dash 16. So you can just check me out there. Um, going to start kind of building it more. So just even with the pod um, going into the new year, we are going to drop our OVA mailbag episode next week. And we have big things planned, but we might not be able to <laughs> enact those plans because this might be our last two podcasts. <laughs> so uh, just with that, we are going to get into any words of encouragement that you have, Meech. Yeah, so from my words of encouragement is that to always find yourself a group of people you can surround yourself by to comfort you and to have a support network, especially in times of tragedy, especially in times where things seem to go sideways, uh, because when you're facing it alone, that's how you deal with a bunch of, you know, illnesses and disease, <clears throat> not dis- just di- diseases, but your your moral character, your moral like your mental state will decline. And that's why you should always have at least somebody around you, especially when you're going through tough times. Yeah. And I I don't have it. That's just really great advice. All I want to say is that I hope everyone just had a good holiday season. Um, Whatever your new year's plans are, have fun, be safe. And we hope to see you in the new year. Uh, It actually might be goodbye forever after after this episode, (laughs) but let's just say it's goodbye for now. And that's the Blurred City Podcast. See ya later. Later.